wholeness and balance vibrations to everyone and thank you for tuning in to another great episode of AstroQuest. Well actually we've had a couple previous episodes and of course now today we're launching the full AstroQuest platform and we're expecting a couple things. Let me get some of these cables out of the way. We're expecting a couple things so we're not going to be able to broadcast on the level that we would completely like to but we definitely have an excellent show lined up for you today. In fact all week I've been really putting a vast amount of information together. There's been uh, of course a major awakening in my life and I just continuously expand but I'm definitely at the end of this year with a very heavy message. And I'll say it's heavy because really you can see why nobody would really want to get up right away and do this. By the end of this conversation, you're going to see why there's just so much to this information that even trying to get your hands around it or your mind around it has been an extremely difficult task for most of humanity. And what that has left us in is a constant spiraling life after life of us not knowing what's going on. And how that really affects us also, people should understand, if your parents can't tell you the whole meaning to life and why we're here, this means that there was a disconnection there. And if their parents didn't tell them, that means there was a disconnection there and so on and so forth. So this is called spiraling out of control because you have no one that you can uh, really trust or really confide in, like you can do with your family members to give you information and then you can know that they're telling you the truth. So remember, there's more to it with when your family gives you information about spiritual knowledge, you trust them because it's your family member. So if someone else, like a priest from another tribe or maybe a, a person that's speaking in, in, in the modern sector comes in and attempts to tell you something about spirituality, of course what has to be dealt with at that point is uh, whether you believe them or not. And um, I do want to tell everyone just right off the bat with today's show, we are using new equipment. So if there's any technical difficulties, we do have a, a clear copy of this show actually being recorded today. So what that means is that you actually have the ability to get a, what would be 720p copy of today's show with the audio and the videos included. So as we work through this and, and, and I get more used to using this platform, of course things will smooth out, but today it'll be our first time. So we're just kind of going through this and, and, um, and uh, getting acclimated with the equipment. So. Let me first um, really briefly get some things loaded here and that's really what I'll have to do. I'll have to load a couple reels today um, and the reason is, is that I've lined up today's show so that it, it can have everything that you need but it's only spanned out in what appears to be 10 minutes worth of pictures and so what I'll have to do is I'll have to click through those pictures and, um, and show you them. Uh, eventually when we get the final piece of uh, one of the final pieces of equipment here you won't see me clicking and transitioning and things but actually that'll that'll help us today because there are certain things that I'll need to point out and I'm only using a mouse and I remember that in the future to, to increase the mouse size but there's a couple things that I have to point out in the pictures that I'm going to be showing and uh, but we're definitely going to be getting into this a lot more and following this entire thing. So let us uh, take a moment to just take a breath. I said I was going to do that today because you know we rush into these shows or at least I'm rushing. I, I've got up at least uh, or I had at least four hours to prep today alone for the show just getting all this stuff lined up and it's just amazing not only how time consuming it is to get all the information together but how you run into these little small quirks and technical difficulties as you're doing it and so I just really want people to understand and, and this is not as simple as sometimes I make it look I always have a smile on my face and there are many of us on this planet that are, that are very strong and, and, and very persistent at getting awakening to humanity and getting people expanded and, and out of this, the clutches of, the, of this dark consciousness that is pervading this planet. But in that of course there's all of this uh, turbulence at times that you have to fly through. You have to have a lot of persistence to actually get a degree of information together and, uh, and put in the right chronological order that's really going to assist people. So let me just look through this really briefly here. Um, because I, like I said, I wanted to take this first part of today's show and allow people to just take a break from everything they've been doing. They may have just rushed in and got the keys and turned it on, didn't want to miss any part of it. Or some people may be, of course, catching it later and, you know, they just got out of a scenario. So they're like, oh, let me just turn this on and see what this guy's saying. So um, 
to prevent like the overload of stress and which leads to misunderstandings, I, I really wanted to start off first with uh, giving us just a, a little. over and over again and that's something that we're not going to let happen this time it's like within all of this we really have to see that it's up to us to guide and control the humanity's direction and steer it with responsibility into the proper directions knowing how responsibility increases you how it makes you more aware how it makes you feel more alive every time that you wake up and you have a, a plethora of things to do how it really just, that you want to do, that it really moves you to, to experiencing what is really called life, which is not the lie that they're trying to make it now. So I just want everyone to know that. We're just going to go ahead and, uh, like I said, take that breath, and then we're going to get right into seeing exactly what's been going on here on the planet, especially uh, now. Right, so hopefully everyone enjoyed that. I know that was uh, something that we generally don't do. We generally go right into to explaining the conversation and, and um, <clears throat> talking about exactly what's going on in the matrix, etc. By the way, here's another camera shot too for anyone who wants to see what's in the studio. We do have the frequency generators and the frequency devices here. Here's, uh, of course, some, some tuning forks. If you ever want to know what those things are in the hands of those gods in Egypt and in different uh, areas of, uh, uh, of the esoteric art, it's different devices that can ring out vibration like that. Because in reality, that it, in a reality that is full of nothing but vibrations, if you can move vibrations around and metamorphosize vibrations, then you can keep yourself surrounded in a field based on the frequency that you, uh, you've already identified as the frequency that you wish to be on. And uh, that's a very important thing because our vibratory frequency, what we take in is so important. It, what we take in actually even, even creates portals inside of us. And of course, um, for anyone that is uh, wondering, you know, how does this all work with, with portals? The, in the Eucharist, which is actually where the, the Savior Jesus says, eat my flesh, drink of my blood, and you become a part of me, etc. You have to understand that all animals have a Eucharist, just as Jesus was a fish and he's saying to basically eat the fish and you, I will have a portal to you. Um, it's the same thing in the, in the ancient traditions with the aurochs. The aurochs had a Eucharist themselves. They eat the beef and we have a portal to you. So that is also the, the biggest knowledge that has ever been available here to me is that you are what you eat. So if you do choose to eat certain meats, some people, somebody asked me the other day on Facebook, they said, 
is there any kind of meat that I can eat, like whether it's good stock or, or, or like uh, organic meat that I've raised myself? And I said, because at this point I've, I've said it already too many times about staying away from the meat, I said, ask the animals. <laughs> see what they say about it. Like, see what they say about you eating them. And as the ancient teachers say, if it runs from you, don't eat it. We put here for you, but by the, the, your brothers, who are the trees, you share this relationship with them, this grain and this grass and this fruits and all of that. And with all of that, you, it, man can, and woman can suffice. And of course, there is the king who's called MLK or Molech, which is actually abbreviation for milk <laughs> in the physical reality. So there is also the milk, which you could use, or be, uh, which is like the beginning of beginning to use meat because you then use the milk to make cheese and then you make you know the um, the cow's milk and you drink this and then you know it starts to lead to the lactose uh, situation in the body the high levels of acidic uh, situation in the body of course uh, a lot of mucus in the basically the body starts to clog up and this begins to make the human dense and then as they begin to become more dense and dense then they'll even attempt to eat the, the cow that they once only used or the goat that they once only used for cheese and meat. And, and then of course you have to pay the recompense for, uh, or excuse me, cheese and milk. And then you have to pay the recommend, recompense from the universe. So how this whole thing is being run now is that our conflicts and, and our consumption of other entities is causing us to be here. And when I say here, I don't just mean the physical reality, I'm actually talking about a vibratory frequency and consciousness because some people have this idea that they're going to be leaving the planet once they raise into a vibrational frequency that's high enough, and that's kind of called death, <laughs> but the reality is, is that we have vehicles that can accept such high levels of frequency and we could be on such a high level, but we would still be in a physical body. We would be able to mold it and shape it as we please, you would have full control over the beast, as, as the esoteric knowledge says. But you would not be confined to it. So I want you to see that, um, that today, that you get this major understanding because the images that are necessary to convey the message are actually available. And that's important. So let's get ready to get into this. I think I've done enough blabbing. Everyone knows that I'm not really too big on the, the just having uh, convenient, uh, convenient conversations and things. I normally like to get right into to working on what we have in store because some people are waiting for that like ASAP. Like people are dealing with situations right now that are already so far out of control that it literally becomes something that, um, excuse me here, let me uh, shut down just a couple networks here. It becomes something that there's a desperation and that's also where many people have looked into spirituality through desperation. They're like, man, I need a solution for this problem like ASAP and uh, I'm willing to get that solution anywhere and then this of course leads also to spiritual problems so of course now we're, we have to run the full gamut in the, on the entire development of mankind which of course is the topic of the show which is demigods angels and activated humans so of course this is the first astral quest episode and uh, I'm excited to be here so let us begin. It'd be nice if we had some theme music to each of these pictures. Okay, there's something that takes place in all the holy books. <laughs> it's called a war. Whether it's the Bhagavad Gita, whether it's the Bible, whether it's the Quran, there appears to be clearly a war going on. It's chaos. So when you open up your spiritual connection in this world right now, you actually open it up to a battlefield. And I believe personally that because that is the entry into spiritual knowledge and that is the tree of good and evil. That spiritual knowledge attempts to give you a full, fully expanded uh, timeline and history and symbolism attached of what our spirituality has been. So it looks like our spirituality has been a war, <laughs> if you didn't notice. And I just remember that in some of the more uh, the, the older books, 
what it says is, is that once this war begins to take place, then it actually allows humans to become portals for energies that were removed off this planet a long time ago. As long as everyone here is in this symbiotic relationship and understands their position, there never enters something else that attempts to move the entire thing around. So basically, while you're, when you're all connected and you're all working in unison, then there is nothing that can come against you. But when you start to divide, you actually come against yourself. That's how it really works first, because everything takes place on the spiritual and an internal level before it takes place in the physical reality. So let us stop looking at these, these physical wars and start asking ourselves about the war going on inside of us. Between these two different sides, one is obviously flesh and the other one is obviously the spirit, trying to gain control over one another. Not allowing each other to, to sharpen each other anymore, but to actually use the sharpening tool, which is the sword, to slay each other with. Now, if you understand, the sword is nicknamed the S word because it is a word that was used to cure things. That word bought into a physical reality does the exact opposite. It actually kills things. So that's the symbol of the sword. So what you have in history is you have, I'll just go from the biblical text, Shem, Ham, and Japheth being told by their father Noah to not get into any quarrels once he leaves here. And that if, he did, if they did, then they were going to bring back these men of renown, which was basically known as the, the, uh, the ancient serpents. Now, the thing about the ancient serpents, first of all, you have to understand that they're bipedal because the curse that came to the serpents later on is it curse you down to the ground. Now you have no legs. That, but that's the new serpents. The ancient serpents were bipedal. They walked up on two feet. And we're going to show you some of them today. So they say that basically don't get into quarrels and fights and wars and start slaying each other and hating each other and thinking, you know, this area is mine and I didn't get the good area and I'm going to sell you off to someone else as soon as someone else gets here and I want to rid myself of them, get away from my family. You see, <laughs> that's actually what creates the chaos. And the confusion. So before people begin to complain now in the future, especially after they hear this program, heavily think about whether you're in the real war where you're attempting to take and partake of these different sides that are volleying back and forth why our children are around and why things are precious to us are around. And then when a mistake is made, like a bomb is dropped on top of a school, then someone else suffers for someone using too much force and power trying to prove a point. Let me back this audio down a little bit. So where this actually leads us is, is it leads us to examining history from the standpoint of the conflict. Now, it's interesting because just as I mentioned to you, and let's uh, get this picture going here, just as I mentioned to you that there obviously was a point where these energies actually arrived. Like, the conflict started to, to occur. As I talked about in another episode, we begin to use the holy languages to curse each other and fighting each other and backbiting. And then all of a sudden, something came and showed up. Arrivals, they call it, from the sky. In cherubs, which are basically uh, the ancient version of a UFO. The, the thing I want you to establish for you very briefly in this conversation now is that Sometimes, instead of play, paying attention to the God, look at what he's riding in. See, just like humans, humans have these cars and they ride around cars, of course, an anagram for arc. So humans ride around in these arcs and pretty much based on what kind of car a person drives these days, you can kind of tell a lot about them. So it's the same thing about the gods, that the chariot, which is where char is the root word to cherubim, the cherubim that the God rides in tells you everything about the God, how it looks, what color it is, what's on it. These are called sometimes covenants. You know, the God has uh, clearance to ride over your zones because, of course, you're, you're a planetary system. You're not just a human being. You're an entire universe. So what you'll find is you'll find this time where there was something called the arrival by what I'm just calling the eggheads. Because that's what, and I would love to have the clip to source it here, and that's the other equipment. I could just source equipment on the, uh, source content on the fly. But the eggheads are, 
the, excuse me, the eggheads, if you notice uh, in the, the uh, clip, Donald Duck and Math Magic Land, you've got to really check this out and see how Donald, or Disney is really spilling the entire occult on little children and opening up portals in little children. We'll actually do a little, uh, well, actually a big review on that, maybe next. So what you have here is you have a time in which after the conflicts on Earth, there becomes an arrival of a different kind of being, one that's already familiar with conflict. They're weathered, been running around in the outside universe, the incar the, uh, in, in, uh, what's called the inorganic. Any type of real universe, you go to through the center of the planet and then you exit. And the space that you exit in, which is called inner space, is where all organic life lives. If you take off in a a jet propulsion rocket spewing gas and fire everywhere, you're going into an inorganic because just how you left is wrong. You just two, three, four, five men on board. <laughs> so we have to see that it, not everyone's on board is what I'm saying. We have to see that there are men and women or composite what we call a man and woman that have already been throughout the galaxy making several mistakes. And so I want people to really focus on that for a moment because it's a major, major point. That there are actually beings out there that they just kept going. You know, they built the rockets and they built the shams, they built the space shuttles and they're, where are they going? What are they trying to find? Then they leave, someone goes off on an expedition, never comes back. You know, all this activity without everyone being involved. This was what the main situation was. Remember, when you're divided, then only a certain group of people do certain things. When you're together, everyone has the ability to experience it simultaneously. There's no first. So what you're dealing with here on your planet is a group of beings that are, have been living in an inorganic field for a long time. And some say that their involvement with us is actually becoming or has became the healing, at least for many of them, meaning that seeing organic life again allowed them to remember, oh, yeah, that's what it was like. I'd rather have that than, than a cold sham spaceship, terrible cherubim. And let me explain what that kind of uh, what that kind of uh, speak means. Now, here is the, the greatest confusion that has been going on here. One of the greatest confusions that have been going on here on Earth. And that confusion is in regards to what is the good genie and what is the bad genie. Now remember, this is the whole tree of good and evil now, so you know there's a trick that's about to be played. What are the good ones and what are the bad ones? So if you go into Samaria, which of course summer means the civilized king, Sumer, okay? So what happens is, is that you go there and you find that there's this belief that the ones from the sky are good, but the ones from the ground are bad. And this is why you get the two, em the two uh, uh, emblems. And then the author has mistakenly said be the struggle between the good and the evil genius, or maybe he did do it correct enough for you to see that they're in duality. So now they have these bird men, who supposedly are spirits and live in the sky, that are fighting against these earth uh, uh, men, I guess we could say the Uruk or the Arak in the Uru. Later on, this is, becomes Pan, it becomes Dionysus, it becomes, you know, the lunar god, Sin, Nanar, it, it, many things, but just meaning the Lord. Lowered, L O W E R D E D, and Lord, L O R D, same word. Now, the Lord, of course, lives on the ground, it's been bought down. So the ones that are in the sky or air, also called the Aryan, thinks that he may be above. Never realizing, again, more those who are participating in this, many are participating in this, don't realize that it's just the same thing. Whether you're on the ground, if one of you is on the ground, and the other one of you are in the sky, you're not here. You're not together. And that creates the situation. See, like this is what many people are not seeing still. 
They're not seeing that what creates the situation here on the planet is the division. So if we can take the larger forces and then compress them, like Dynamo Jack says, I take the good, the, 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 excuse me, the good, he said, I take one energy and then I take the other energy because there's two energies and I force them together. And then the body activates. So this means that you actually defeat the war within by making the size come to a truce. It's like, well, there's bigger things, guys. You guys got to all get together now. And that's also what I'm here to tell the world is that, man, this, there's bigger stuff, man. We could be doing a lot of things, but unfortunately, someone keeps wanting to live in the past. Someone keeps wanting to practice even Goetia and necromancy, bringing spirits back from the past, bringing basically yourself from parts of the timeline of when you didn't fully understand how it works. And of course, because we live in like a smear of time, more so than just a tick, like a digital, then you have in different periods, even the animal, but more than anything, the essence of exactly what is taking place. And of course, I've sourced here a picture of the original Anunnaki. <laughs> I should create a, a Facebook page, the original Anunnaki.com. Because what happens now, because everyone wants to become Anunnaki, now we have all of these different beings and, and people and you know cult societies and all sorts of stuff saying that they're the Anunnaki and in touch with the Anunnaki. But the reality is, is that the symbol was always of an owl or a night bird because an owl being at night kind of goes against the entire Aryan system because the Aryan system is solar, it hangs out during the day, it's eagles flying high in the sky, and then there's this bird that hangs out at night. <laughs> so what this really allows us to see of course, not only the symbolism, we're seeing the American dollar bill and all this stuff, but it allows us to see, and of course, at the Bohemian Grove or Behemoth Grove out there with the owl statue. But you're able to see that you can follow history if you understand the symbolism. But we've gone through a time to, that even to speak of what I'm talking about now was heresy. <laughs> if you said something about what was going on, you would get the sword. So how did we ever expect for us to have the knowledge before this point? And all these people who are saying that they have the knowledge, we're, gonna, we're probably going to see, especially if they watch this, that they've been rolled up into one of these systems and have this stuff even all around the house and all over. And basically entangled with it like a spider web, symbols and pentagrams all over the place. And, you know, it feels like after a while you're just being intruded on by symbolism. And there's a reason why. So us fully understanding what the reason why is gets us to the control point, which is, of course, what the Astro Quest is all about. The Astro Quest is about putting you at the control point. So let's go on because we've got quite a few pictures here. I'm moving a little slow. So let me give a transition to this camera really briefly for you to see a cherub. Now, a cherub is basically when the genetic hybridization and modification is at what's supposed to be its height, okay? Because people think that the, the ancestors were genetically modifying themselves with beakers in, 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 uh, in little vials in, in, in laboratories and all that. No, the ancestors only worked with the actual essence itself. But remember, the ancestors had already been experimenting with so many things that when a group of them came, sometimes called the Nephilim, that, like I said in the beginning, the ones who came that had already been weathered about the reality, they were looking for things to keep blending themselves with and keep expanding themselves with. And so what you're looking at here in this image, which may seem like something that is mythical now, was actually in existence here. Possibly no longer than 5,000 years ago. And that many of these entities, because still having physical bodies, physical bodies always suffer physicality. They may live for 1,000 years, it may live for 2,000 years even, but it will pass off this plane. But that is not the last time that you'll hear about it because it was actually on the spiritual plane before it got into the physical plane. So this is 
becomes the entire key to understanding all this illuminated knowledge that is being passed around, which is the evocation of many of these, ans these uh, uh, ancestral or primordial states of our consciousness. Now, all symbolism, such as you see Saturn or Set, which is the Set monster, as they would call it, or Set beast, are these kind of what were called cherubs that would wander around. Now, some of the giants were even able to tame these cherubs and would ride around on them also. Just like you see someone's got to have a horse. So let's put that in a, a regular tense. Someone's got to have a Mustang. 5.0. But then somebody comes with a Ferrari. <laughs> and those are both horses. So what you can see is, is that this whole riding around on something powerful was definitely going on with our ancestors. They wanted some horsepower under the hood. And they often equip these or use beings that were equipped with different things. Like they say the dragon is equipped with blowing fire. We don't see him too much anymore. They rode him to death. <laughs> you see that there are armaments now with our Air Force. The, the carrier comes out and it has several different stingers and bombs attached with the glows of a thousand suns. So all you watch through history is just the evolution of our destruction of each other. To remove yourself from that frequency, all you have to do is understand all itself. There is also much more to this, which is like repairing your mind, body, and soul. We get into that a lot. And this will also be our future episodes will be about repairing the mind, body, and soul. And, and how to uh, raise higher than many of these low vibrational frequencies. Excuse me, I'm going back and forth between pictures here. But raise higher than many of these lower vibrational frequencies by doing simple things to our body. Meaning, all of this still cleansing and, 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 uh, and doing Ethereum, uh, having Ethereum products running through you to make you uh, more uh, soluble. All of that is still something that you should gladly want to do when you really see the potential of what you could be doing. And of course, even more than that, the situation that we may find ourselves in. So let me go back here. And I, I do need to kind of get my, my, my uh, <laughs> mouse situation over here together. Okay, there we are. All right, so the other thing you need to understand is that me, to show you further, and because this is where I used to get always confused about where was man when these beings arrived? Did these beings create man? That big question. You will see, if you really study the ancient knowledge closely, that man was already here. This is why also on this image, let's go back really briefly here. Let's see here. You'll see on this image, you'll see that there is already a man on the ground. And this of course is uh, the worst way to look through images, but let's just go ahead and let it play. And then when I get to that image, I'll let it, I'll stop it. There it is. Okay. Here, right between the, and I have the mouse, hopefully you can see it, right between these two eggheads, <laughs> There is a man standing here. They're taller, so it shows you that the average height of a man came up to about their leg, the top of their leg. So, but it shows you that man is already here. This is a major thing to see is that man was more or less in a conflict with these beings, but highly outclassed. Man was running around here the same way that you see men run around here when you go into the pre-Columbian areas. When you go, or when you used to be able to go into Nubia and places like that. Where when you see the man is just very attached to nature, knows everything about nature in the animals and the plants and the trees and just how to live and how to migrate. Not quantum physics. Quantum physics for them comes out in the dream world in an entirely different way. So you'll see that that's why it's called the civilized kings is because these Anunnaki, Igigi, whatever you want to call them, are they have knowledge of how to run societies, how to run systems. So it's also very important that you see they're not just learning how to do this. You may just be trying to get a hold of uh, uh, and, and understand fully what exactly is going on, but that's not something that they that's not how they're living. They know fully what they're doing. And so it behooves you literally to actually figure out what is going on here. So here we are. 
searching the picture again, you see that there are men here wrestling the animal-like beasts, but the animal-like beasts are standing upright, meaning that they're showing you that the, the men of the time were in a conflict with these beasts. And just so that you understand that these beasts are not to be considered like the same as cows and oxen and chicken and things that we have today, is down here on the right corner behind man you see a small goat. They just want you to know that these are large beasts. So let's keep going. Because what we'll find is, is that these beasts also had another situation that they brought to earth which was, of course, this type of stuff doesn't fly even in the outer universe, external universe. That there's like a police in the external universe too. And so the entities that actually arrived to do this to mankind were already being pursued. So what you find here also is the Aztec account of this story of when they call, when they, when they say the first fathers, which as you can see, there's animal heads on the top of these totems or top of these these costumes or customs as I call it and so they the Aztec denote that there was an arrival also of these beings and of course the, the documentation on this says that there was 200 of them so right now we've only seen like 10 <laughs> nor do I have 200 pictures here to show you of different ones but and also to see the next level of this is that later on, or at least, excuse me, in the beginning, that they could appear as they wanted. And this also plagues us today because sometimes when we're looking for the ancestor of our people and then we find some powerful God that may have the same skin tone as us, we jump on that side. Never realizing, remember, this is an illusionist. This is an Anunnaki Illuminati. So it could be anything it wants to be. As they say, Jesus, when you looked at him, appeared to be anything that you needed to see. There's a scripture that says this. So it's a shape shifter. Do, does everyone have shape shifting capabilities, by the way? <laughs> That's a serious question. Do people actually have the energy systems and the equipment and the understanding of the equipment to, to fully activate? And, and shape shift right off in front of people? No. So if there's one or two people around that can do that, just only one or two people, we have to look into everything. And your world, unfortunately, only documents only a few people, probably a handful of them, about 10, maybe even seven of them, that have this high level of spiritual power and shape shifting ability. So what does that tell you? That tells you out of millions of people who actually have the same abilities, they can prevent billions from knowing about it and only allow 15 or 20 or 30 to fully know about how to activate your vehicle. Because remember, this is the information. Of course, the information leads a lot to you seeing the sign and the symbolism and the, and the necessary uh, procedures of, of, of working with your body on expansion. But don't get the conversation confused for the expansion. So and the reason why I say that is that you have to put the time and the attention into actually seeing all of this and then feeling all of it. Like, yo, man, this is, uh, this is a little deep. Like, man, if this is really going on, <laughs> I need to wake up because if, if I'm wrong, then nothing's going to happen. I'm just going to be here right like I am right now but if he's right then that means that I've been here for a long time doing the same thing even if I have a spiritual inclination and I know something about spiritual knowledge this only says that I was in a spiritual atmosphere before this means that this is not something that's new to you you've done this multiple lifetimes but never still during that lifetime being able to get your hands completely and your mind completely around it and it eluded you, eluded you once more and you gave up your power, meaning you gave up your angel. The word power is synonymous with angel, meaning you gave up your soul. You sold your soul. You gave it to them. You see what I mean? Like the words are very tricky, especially when we get caught in, oh, no, I didn't do that. And oh, what if I'm damned for good? And that's all their belief structure. But still selling your soul means to give up your power to something. 
And so that's what people have to see if whether or not that they've been playing around with this uh, quote unquote angel and God and whatever you want to call it next. And then that's called the situation. The only thing that we need is each other. Like the only thing that that we ever needed here was free for us. It was given to us. And what civilization actually brings is it brings all these things that we don't need. I'm sitting in here in the studio just to be able to broadcast to you the message of something that we should all just know. So let's go. This is Baal. Now, if you notice we're in the Old Testament, which of course is full of a lot of confusion, which we'll definitely see here in a moment, there is a volley, a back and forth volley going on between Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. I mean, excuse, excuse me, I'm sorry. Between Baal and Yahweh, okay? Yahweh, the, the Jehovah of the Christians, okay? Even though Jehovah is Baal, but we won't get into that until just a little bit, which you'll see that's obvious. Okay, so there are two now of these different beings that have landed that are actually in a quarrel with each other. But you'll find out that they always quarrel with each other. They actually fight with each other on what beasts they can master. Some call it the beast master. Some call it the lord of beasts. Okay, so when humanity is confused for being a beast because of their activity and how they're fighting each other and how they act like they don't have any consciousness, then the Lord of Beasts becomes their master. But there are more than one Lord of Beasts, as you have already seen. In here in the symbolism, you see there's a the fish symbolism, you see there's every single animal of nature. But the character that we're really honing in on, if you went and asked the individuals who are worshiping Serenatus, they would swear to you that he was the only one. But then if you went over to the other side, you will find some of the same glisten motifs in another deity that swears that he's the only one. And this is called monotheism. OK, mono happens to be an anagram for the word moon. And what moon theism is, is that the moon is the only God. So you can find many religions that actually believe this, mainly one of them, and they carry a crescent moon as their symbol, but that this, then the crescent moon has to be that horn because there's a belief that one planet says, I'm the only one, I'm the refractor of all other lights. You have to come through me unless you, in, in order to get to them. See, if it's not, you have to, some say you have to go through the father to get to the son. It's really, you have to, you have to, you could see how they, they're switching it completely around where, the individual puts their energy into something to attempt to go to something. But it's all external. You are what's in the inside. So once you look out and you go to a Lord and a God and all these different words that we've created now for it, this is the first road to error. Now we have to go down the road of error and show how many are lost down this road where these kind of entities as I said, the ones that arrived, still running around external worlds, trying to figure out where they're going to get a womb from. They come and they start giving the place up, dividing things. And this is why they say Marduk divided T Tiamat. And this is why they say Shimham and Japheth cast lots and certain parts of lands were given to them. Who said that they can divide the land? The land is free. Did not they get it for free? So this starts to tell you, show you that this is where the division begins. You divide the land, you divide man. You divide the animals. Division also leads to deactivation, by the way. I'm sure most people are familiar with how the, how the, uh, the poles of our body can actually short circuit when you go into, uh, into heavy levels of um, duality and conflict. So what you'll see here now is, is you'll see that the lords of your world and that's why I said that there's always so much stuff that I have to deal with before I have one of these conversations with everyone. And it's because some of their angels are actually strong, <laughs> while some of us are way stronger. That, that's what you have to see, that I'm not just here as just a man. I'm not the body. But when there is heresy, injustice, unbalance, and things going on throughout the universe and interverse, that's when I show up. There are many people that are in this world right now that when they show up to these planets, this is to deal with these kind of beings. They're weak compared to us, but they will pick on the ones who don't know and the ones who are ignorant. 
And they will even attempt to actually go into a war, which is what they've been doing also for the last two to three thousand years. We're mounting armaments and building more equipment to face the final conflict of when all their stuff melts. <laughs> Meaning that the final conflict is when the shams, the original shams get here, which people call space shuttles and all that. The real cherubims get here and start to actually raise the people's consciousness. And there's a lay down of arms because there's there's no arm. The weapons are, are, are non-functionable. That's when man and woman get the opportunity to connect themselves again with not having to work in a matrix all day when they should be spending time on the expanse of their soul. Those are times to come. Now, some are in this world to speed about those times, meaning to end the dominion. The dominion must end. For us to get to the next level, it's got to be over. So here's the thing. If you don't understand the symbolism, you miss the obvious. This is the crescent on uh, the, the crest on Buckingham Palace, the front door. <laughs> and some, if you look at this straight straight ahead, you, you miss it because you think that there's this huge crown in the middle of the crest. But that crown is actually on the top of the head of a horn god. <laughs> if you see here, this is the crown. And I'm, again, I would, I'm going to get a better uh, mouse pointer next time we start. But this is the crown. And then in the, down in the center is the beast. Okay, another one of those horn god Nephilim things, just as you know, they worship Nimrod. Nimrod is Samaria. Samaria is what we just went through just briefly. So they're doing it. So anytime the king of the land, remember the king and queen, like you think queen, that's, that's the queen Elizabeth? You think she's the queen? Hmm, no. Last time I checked, Ishtar was the clean, queen here. You think that the king, what is, what is his name, Philip or Henry or whatever his name, you think he's the king? No, Azazel is the king. And they work for these beings. They've already been subdued. They've already sold out. Several lifetimes. They bargained in lifetimes from space shuttles and, and time machine lifetimes. You see? So you have to really see that this is not a game. You're into something that is really, really gotten out of control. You have people around you that don't know the good mark anymore. I mean, they don't know how to, to gain balance anymore. They don't know where that position even is because something has taken them off of that position. So it's basically like if you don't know what's going on behind those palace doors and a lot of people like they complain about that because they don't know about what legislation and what all these political leaders are really doing because they make decisions and then they come out and they have us vote on a couple things like basically the last decisions that they came to of one or the other which are really the same thing then they give us a choice to make us bind ourselves and oath ourselves to it and pledge our allegiance to it and then they push it through and then we're here for a few more lifetimes uh, not me that's not gonna happen like I'm just not into it I may have been into it two or three lifetimes but stuff like that gets really old to me but I'm not just going to approach this with some regular level of trying to fix a problem. Let's go occupy something. I'm not occupying nothing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to expand my oversoul and figure out where I put my ship to deal with this situation. It sounds fun, and that's why it's an astral quest. And I'm very serious. But the fact is, is that people have to see that there's a step-by-step -step process to a full awakening. And that to be able to access the energy and the will that is necessary to rise above this, because it's just your will, like your will has been broken. People have to see that they, you've been bombarded by elf. elf I won't get, I'll get into that later, but the elf star or the elven star or elves is another race of beings that reside on the astral plane. So it is right to say to use an elf wave or low frequency elf wave because this is the same way that even the God uh, uh, Jehovah would go and produce lying spirits in the mouths of prophets. If you go look at the Bible, God actually uh, lets a spirit of lying go into speaking through another person's mouth. That's when people have to start really seeing what you're dealing with. But how is it done? It's done through an elf. An elf is a spirit or a wave, a vibration or a frequency that has a consciousness attached to it. So when you're playing around with the elves in Santa Claus, you may get left behind for real. So let's keep going through this. <laughs> I like today's show. I like having the pictures. It really helps. 
So what you see here is this is how they depict the kingdom. <laughs> it's funny because it's like you're in the bed with your wife and then there's a goat in the middle. Like you have to realize that these people are worshiping the goat God. The goat God has a thousand names at least. So we're not even going to get into just naming all the names of this entity today. But what you'll see is just, again, pictures that people don't have and never get, but to see that there is an affiliation. Now, down here, you'll see a child being bought. Now, this is, of course, the same concept of Moloch. Now, this seems very uh, um, uh, confusing to people because they, they wonder if the ancestors were just only wholly sacrificing their children. Of course, they were doing that, too. But there's another sacrifice that you can do of a child, which is to give your child to the system, to let the school just have them every day. You could homeschool them. To put your, your child and sprinkle them, which is to the rain god. To baptize them to Mar and the ocean god. To pass them through fire to, you know, Yod or Ja, the fire god. So people are bequeathing their children to these gods all the time that they're not paying attention to what their child is doing. It's not, that's a sacrifice. Because that's going to cost. And we've seen it cost us. We've seen our entire Generation, actually not just generation, but generations. We've seen entire generations fall by the wayside. We now see children in Gaza. We see all over the world children that are just have no parents. They're starving to death while UN pretends that they're going to go do something. Knowing darn well that the Theosophical Society. Like the, the information is not even that long ago for us to say that we have forgotten. So we need to start saying maybe that you feel like you can't do anything about it so that you can get to the point where you actually can. See, people have to get to the certain points first, which is, you know, you realize the armaments and the hierarchy, you're like, man, that ladder's pretty high. <laughs> In order for me to knock it down, I'm gonna need to be all the way on top. Well, let me get to climbing then. See, you don't just say, oh, it's too immense. Never give up on yourself. And that's what I'm saying, it has a lot to do with the will. So when your will gets back, then that's when you come through with the power and the force necessary to, to understand your position and removing the parasite or the paradise. See, you have to realize that because God was in paradise already, that meant that humans had to get there. This is what the king or the Khan does, makes everyone believe that they, have to, they are here to live in paradise while you're here to hope that you can do it your next life. And maybe, maybe, if you don't, if the Lord doesn't hit you with the conviction of something that you've already done and you get more time, then maybe you'll get a chance to bask in the glow of the God for a moment and stand by the pool and be bored. <laughs> you see, people are, are not getting it. It's like if you are in this, uh, um, this situation where you're depending on something to do everything for you, then this leaves you forever dependent. So what we want to do is we want to get to a point where we identify who these forces are and then move into the next level of expanding of who we are. We want to close the book on them like, OK, Operation Horn God complete, done, out of the way and start getting into you, understanding, expansion, etc. So let's get to the pictures. I want to have the pictures because then people are like, uh-oh, I think he's, they got it right there. It's right there. Now, now I'm going to show you it's everywhere. <laughs> if you think that you're back there with the only God and he's telling you he's the only one, he's cheating on you. <laughs> because the same entities and the same armament keep showing up everywhere. It's almost like the monotheism is a full monopoly now. Same word. And everyone has just agreed to take certain portions. And then when something has to be done and they go and say what they need to say and they get their portion and they go. So you have to see that, man, you're in someone's system where they're keep they're going to keep playing the game. They keep sending these actors and stars <laughs> down on the earth that, you know, say they're this and say they're that. Do this and do that and tell you to do this and do that believe in this, but it seems to be all one major key to it. And some people say, well, how do you know the difference between even them and someone like you? It's because if someone's pointing you with back in, like you go into yourself, then you know they already tapped in because you're going to meet them there. Like I say, go inside. You'll meet me there because I'm already inside. But someone says, I'm on the mountain. <laughs> That's why God loves to live on the mountain because people can't get there. 
These external beings, and especially how they look, never appear to man. If not, if anything, they never show their face. That's why you'll see later on Moses in, in, in working with Sin, Sin AI on Sinai, the horn god, even gave him horns. <laughs> if it was not him himself, transfigured and come back down. But you'll see that it didn't show its face because it had the grotesque face of the activities that car it carries on. You notice how person who does very negative things just don't look benevolent. <laughs> He's like, you, you, I can't trust him. He doesn't even look like he looks, he's been doing something. Or she looks like she's been doing something. Because you wear it on your face. So if this entity is keeping up hell around the clock, what do you think it looks like? It can't show you the face. <laughs> so understand that when the angel Gabriel, who's the Gab angel of the moon, notice he wears the red crown, came down and told Muhammad that he had a message that he needed to deliver, and Muhammad delivered that message. He delivered that message on behalf of Azazel. And that was the end of it. Because they, these people were finally coming out of that monotheism that they were in before this next round of confusion came in. They're always fighting and warring with each other because it's about ill. And that's what this comes down to, as Jordan Maxwell is the illy, Illuminati as they call themselves. Pill, they're ill, sick L. Sick means to cut. Their words are all programmed in the language, so it's not hard for their gig to be up. And guess what? Their gig is up. So you see here, it crossed already into Islam. Notice the angel has black wings. That's why it's important to go through all this and see all the symbolism and all the colors that are being used because now, especially with all this new stuff coming out that people keep doing on DeviantArt, you don't know if you want to use one of those pictures or use the ancient picture. But you have to go back to the oldest picture to see exactly what the artist was depicting because those were the only times that they actually depicted, depicted things the exact way that they really were. And that's why it becomes so important to do that. So, as you can see, I'm going to take you through how it's in all of the religions. I've got another image here people wouldn't even suspect it. We always think that the Indian man is one of the kindest men. These people lost their land. Now you understand what also went on in Palestine. When you play around with this deity, it gives you the ability to be attacked by other individuals in the hierarchy that are higher than the one that has you under control. So when they were running around with the horns on the head and just saying it was all about the buffalo in the history book, but it was more than a buffalo. It was about the god of the forest. Like everyone wants to keep playing around and acting like they don't see who the witch's god really is and that it, there's a few of them. They are a family of satar, meaning hidden ones. You can't see them with your physical eye. They love to hang out in places like groves. So in, in mazes, they even bring maize or corn to, you know, try to, uh, as a, a uh, uh, what do they call it, a foothold into certain tribes, such as uh, individuals such as whose name is Quetzalcoatl, bought wheat and corn into those tribes to gain a foothold with those people who were looking for just more to eat. So let us go through this. You see it. It's in the Native American culture. You can find a million pictures of them dancing with it. You see here, these are original uh, uh, images of Du Hafifa which was also known as the cherub or vehicle of Muhammad, meaning when Muhammad was supposedly caught up into the heavens, he rolled this. But you see, this is the cherub from Iran, Babylon. It's the same thing, just repackaged, and the symbolism is spruced up a little bit, and the edges are rounded off, and the artist may need to be doing something more. But I think it's, again, standing on the clouds is always the motif of, of the God's cherub is coming through the clouds. And that's why I say Jesus comes, he's coming through the clouds. It's the same story repackaged over again with the Lords. Anytime they allow their name to be used as such, people say, well, no, that's just because people are calling him that. Trust me, people will not be calling something that has another name, something that's not his name. You see what I mean? It, make sure you call the right name, the, the lots, and the, the contracts and the covenants and the bindings and the pacts are specific. So the individual calls upon that name. Now you see here, it starts to now get hybridized somewhat, but you see the witch's god obviously is Pan. Of course, we went over the, the meaning of Pan, but still the goat god symbolism. You even see here, 
Okay, excuse me, yeah, this, this is actually, you can see the Hindu sun god Shiva here in the back, and this of course is found in Britain. So places that you wouldn't even think that this stuff should be in retrospect, but who's governing where something should or should not be? Again, you'll see this is still not exclusive to, to the witches. Like some people think, well, okay, well, you're showing me a lot of the, the witch stuff, but no. I'm just showing you that it crosses over all cultures. Then this also allows, it, allows you to, when, it, when you uh, do think you're switching something, to not run back into the same thing. So they're dancing around the god of the forest. Obviously, he's really tall. He moved, they move through like spirits, like air. Hot air, you see here, or cold air. You see here, it's crossing across cultures again. This is the Jewish tradition, an evoc evocation through the Kabbalah. You see um, here how the Hebrew language is used in conjunction. You see the candle stand here, which only half of it is being shown. Even that kind of uh, level of symbolism is telling you something, that the demon who's half of the candle, meaning half of the candelabra, meaning three and a half of the seven that's needed to create something in a physical reality are being bought through and the, the mark is then placed on the head of the golem and brings the golem to life. And the mark of course is the, the, the vibration and frequency of the energy they choose to bring out of the portal. You see here, it's fast forward itself. It's gotten into another, uh, um, actually let me go ahead and put the image back. It's gotten into another system. This is modern masonry, and you see the double eagle on the ground, which is also a talisman. I'm hopefully I, I actually have that picture in the picture banks today. But um, as you see, this is an apparition from the Grand Kabbalah. The, the evocation goes on supposedly, and who comes out? A, a horn god. Now notice how I like this picture because of how he was dressed, and this is what I was meaning by it appears just like the person needs to see or what they expect to see. He's out, he's still got the horns on his head, but now he's got a suit coat and tie to be proper. You see? <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, let's go through a couple more images here. Now, we're back in some area. <laughs> some area. <laughs> or I say some Aryans. So we're back in some area, and it's going on. They have here... The, the seven pointed star, they have here the horn god, and these are basically the three suns, okay? In the crescent moon, or the, actually the completed full moon. So these are, this is the symbol of the three suns. Now this, these are not planets in the sense that we understand planets. Like we can say this is the sun in the sky and this is the moon. It doesn't work like that. If, if there's symbols now for entire, con entire systems of consciousness, which is like called an ME. But you see, the one who is welding it now is the priest. That now the Khan or Cain or the king or the Cohen has moved into the cherub. And this is what you see from the top right corner. He's now on, in his cherub flying through the air, meaning he's either die, he's dead and he's now inside of another spiritual being. Or he actually has a physical sham with the electronic arm, which is even talked about in the, in the ancient text. And he's riding around. And who's in charge of what's supposed to be happening is the priest, who is in an enclosure, meaning already in a lowered state of consciousness, but with the vibration rod that is necessary for pushing out these kind of energies. And then you see him go further into the sacrifice, and the, uh, the animal being sacrificed is a goat. And then, of course, on the top, a crescent moon. So it's very specific in the Sumerian about what and these deities that existed in this time were very specific about what exactly the, the adherents needed to do in order to, to, uh, to make sure that they were sufficed properly and taken care of properly. People became slaves to these, these uh, cons. And that's why it's also important to see that, and I actually had a note here, but I was going to go to it, but let me see. But yeah, but it's important to see that the, the entire slavery concept of what has happened here on this planet comes from these energies because no one wants to be equal, everyone wants to divide, everyone wants more, and one wants to say they're higher than another. And so when there's one who can't even have, doesn't have the energy or doesn't have a king or doesn't have someone to follow behind that can do that for them, then they end up becoming a slave. 
This is what's been going on for thousands of years. So you'll find that some of these kings led their people like here's the papacy. He's the pope. This is what's inside of Ratzinger and why he looks so crazy. But they will lead their people, the, the holy Romans, the, the ancient Romans that are inside the Jesuits. And they will start tearing how much they care about everyone else. Like they may then back the British Empire. And then as it goes down into Africa and things, those are if we can, if, if it's in our interest. So remember, they protect those who are in their interest more than the ones that have already joined their team and are just on one of those low rungs. So this is not something that you should see the images today and then think that you're going to go and have a good time and get yourself involved in something like this and, and just be silly and loop yourself. There's no getting to the top. When you, a person joins these organizations, they are actually becoming parts of the base pyramid because it's all hierarchy. This would be like for you to go right to the top because the, this same hierarchy is very similar to the, um, th this kind of hierarchy is very similar to the military. For you to go to the top would be just like you coming in as a private and all of a sudden you made general <laughs> that lifetime. Notice how general has five pentagrams, five pointed stars, it's five hammers, five lifetimes, five circles to get to that level and consistently being able to stay as a killer through five lifetimes. You see what I mean? So this is how it is. So why not find another route? Meaning that find something else to do besides hanging around with dark, ignorant things. So here we go again. We find that in a Roman culture, Pan is depicted once again, horned and with the feet. It's the same stuff. They say redundancy sometimes teaches people. Here we are in Egypt now, Apis. If you understand the composite of the names, because of course, these are war gods, by the way. So the war god always had a, a, a wife that was a warrior goddess. So every war god had a warrior goddess. So this is how they also got the women caught up into this, which we'll show in images here in a moment, was because there was still a goddess. So if the woman didn't want to actually worship a god because she still had the, the problem with her husband or whatever, then there was the goddess that she would go serve. But the goddess was always the wife of this major being. Now, here's a, a, another thing about this particular club of beings. They generally work by specific call signs and then everything is divided later, meaning that the monotheistic symbols are redundant. So there may be different entities that are involved, but they all use the same symbolism. So here we go. Now we see that um, once again, it's in Egypt. Here's a depiction of Ra, a rare image put together. You can see how Ra even connects him with the Hindu culture. You see the horns on the top of the head. You see Isis here. Of course, Isis is a warrior goddess. This is, of course, why they have the, the Statue of Liberty, which is the symbol of the warrior goddess. You see here, here's Marduk, also known as Ra in the Sumerian culture. He's carrying the wheels of time, which is the geometry that's associated with the planet, making him Cronus. He's riding on the set monster or actually, uh, excuse me, the dragon. He's, uh, this dragon is also known as Behemoth, sometimes Apollo. As you see, he's got the kingship crown. So to understand the connection with these divine right kings, even on the planet, as they, the divine right was, is that they are hybrids. Some people think hybrid is better, by the way. You have to understand that the more diluted something becomes with confusion, it doesn't make it better. <laughs> That's very easy to see. Here's Mithra, which is the ancient rites. Now notice the wings. The drawing is getting a little bit less because they have to strike a coin now. Little side note on coins. Like I said before, if you want to follow the energies or the gods throughout time, all you have to do is follow the money. Notice how even today, all of our currency is generally either a circle or a rectangle. Now, a rectangle, of course, is phi, which is the pentagram. And then a circle is, of course, the coin or the king or the cane or the con. So we talked about before the six and the five. 
which makes 11, and that gives us 11, 11. One, 11 on one side and 11 on the other. This is the soccer game and also the football game. And the football game, soccer game is on a rectangle field. So you see, these, this level of connection is geometric that, um, that is going on on the planet. So I just wanted to give that as a side note that you look at the money, it's circular all the time. So here we go on a coin, Mithras, which becomes the entire right of the, the system of the Jesuits. You see here L, like which many people are tempted to, uh, to give all sorts of colors these days, but remember the L were really the Elohim. So there was more than one of them. They did not create man, they are, they are evolvers. So what happens is, is that when people start looking to this and they just want to make the God their color, then they get in this whole bicker about whether L was really black or whether he was really white. These are Anunnaki. They can appear whatever, however they want, however you want it. If you're going to give your energy to them, they'll show up in that form. So you see here, God, L, of the Bible. Bible means two bulls, two bull cane. Cain is a con, is a king. He struck this coin, which is the money throughout the land that, of course, oppresses everyone, makes them have to have a system where it's, it tears everyone because the people who have the most money are, of course, on top, and the people who have no money are on the bottom. Tear is also a word, Tyree, by the way, um, if anyone wants to know why I keep using that. Here goes Mao. We'll go over to the Orient <laughs> because it's important to see that the same entity because of having a cherubim was like back, back you have a UFO right now <laughs> and you're like traveling around through that while everyone else is using the, the, uh, the planes. Back then these beings had at least ships from the ocean that they could travel to a person's homeland and keep up ruckus fast. So again Mao which is the moon god in China you see General Mao in China ruling the place until just recently where there's a switch but not really a switch. Here's Ramen. We now crossed over into when the, uh, the Sushans were migrating where, where you get the word Isu by the way, the Lord. So what happens here you have Ramen, the God, the axe God and as I said before he's known for cutting down family trees, warlike gods and you see on the top of Ramen's head there are horns. You see later on Zeus with the axe, same motif, Santa Claus motif, white beard. They'll come any way. Remember, just, it was just a, these group of people. They felt arist aristocracy. They felt like they were special and chosen. And then they bought into the whole thing only for their later, later demise. So we see here the axe god, Ramen. Ra, the ram. Ra symbol, of course, is a ram. The ram is war. You see here a rufal or a howling dervish to show you it was going on. They were, that could have been you <laughs> with the ax in the hand, looking for someone to appease, looking for uh, uh, someone to slay to appease God. Notice how people feel like, especially now in the Islamic culture, that if they slay someone, then they have pleased God. Same thing in the Old Testament with Jehovah. If the children of Israel go and slay a tribe and knock down all their statues and raise their lands, then they please God. Man, people need to wake up. Keep going. Here we are, Zeus. Now, this is the shape-shifting thing I was talking about. What happens is, is that you see here, Zeus is being worshipped as a large serpent now. So he's ceased to become this man with his axe in his hand, and he's now decided to become an Ophite. That picture I just showed you was actually the Gnostics worshipping uh, Oph, which of course is their, their god, the Ophites. So you see the transition being made now that this god now wants to appear as a reptilian. And that's why you have to watch the evolution of the same thing, though. First horns, now I want to be reptile. Because reptiles begin to become the beast that strikes more fear in people. Let me take this mic down just a little bit. So 
Now, Ophite worship begins. But it's the same thing. The, it, we're actually catching it in between a transition where the name actually, yeah, you can see it, where the name is, is still there on the, the, uh, the relief. So now you get the Nehushtan. You get uh, the brazen serpent being rose up by Moses in front of everyone to cure them. You even finally get David Icke's reptilians. <laughs> but before we get into that, you see here there's now a sacrifice. Some people say, well, what about the goddess? I think the goddess has <laughs> like been the one. Because now all goddesses, and this is what you have to understand about the womb, all goddesses were summed up under Ishtar and Nana. And then when you go to who was ruling over her, you find in her sag, her mother, who she was afraid of. But the covenant itself is with certain, uh, when you see the animals within the covenant, you always see the goats, you always see the dogs, and you always see the aurochs for a major reason. And that major reason is these animals go into heat. And that heat is it's uh, governed by the moon, just as when people find when it gets towards a full moon, you feel a little bit more frisky. But that's why the Nanar sent the moon god with the horns, whatever the moon is, the, the actual, what do they call that, the, uh, uh, Uriel's machine. You know, if you take a look at that thing with a third eye open, you'll just see all these circumambulating chains running through it. So what you have is, is you have the worship going on of Ishtar and the sacrifice of the goat, so you understand where that goat symbolism comes from. And then her, with dogs under her throne, which is in the bottom left corner in the square, dogs under her throne and standing on a dog. And that dog, of course, is Sirius or Big Five, the guard dog. Why Madonna shows up with the black dog in her initiation video. Trust me, as the Astro Quest goes on, we'll be able to go right into those images right away that we're talking about. So people say, okay, bam, it clicks, bam, it clicks. Here we are, Ahura Mazda. This, of course, is Zoroastrian tradition to show you how it passes just all around the world. You have Ahura Mazda cruise over to Persia or India, which now is India, and decide he wants to be there now. And cooking up the same thing, because of course he has his antithesis called uh, Angra Mania, and then they do the dualistic thing while he hangs around in the sky and the other one hangs out in the ground, and the humans go at it again, figuring out which one they really want to be, why they're caught in between both because they're actually in a body that has a spirit and also is flesh. It's to ask yourself, whose fault is it? And you say, well, I'm conflicted, why? Well, it's your body. It was created that way. But then they tell you in the scripture, is the creation to ask God why you created me this way? Hmm, see, this is tampering and bullying. And this is why, like I said, there are energies that are here that are ready to move these guys right into the cubes that they keep playing around with. Here we go. Next image. Now, as I said, back in the old days, the vehicle of the God let you know everything about them. And the, the Lord or Nimrod in many of the, again, all these terms are synonymous, the Lord, Nimrod, rode around on this cherub, which was its chariot called the Anzu bird. Now, Anzu comes from the word An meaning sky and Zu meaning bird, so sky bird. OK, so whether this is a, a symbol of an actual uh, physical entity that this uh, giant used to ride around on or just an ancient symbol for something like a UFO really doesn't matter because some people go back and forth about this. Now, some people have seen these cherubs or entities, even me, myself, because of their eyes. Their eyes are what stand out about them the most when they appear on the astral plane or in, in, in the astral plane. And so it's something that I, I, I finally was able to crack that what they're doing with the swastika, which is actually the, the, gram, the gramion, the tetragramion, is it creates or evokes four of these energies, which basically lift then a human being up into the presence of God. And this is why all of, or quote unquote God, Okay? And this is why all the people in the Bible, the prophets and everyone, they always see these cherubim because these are basically like God's taxi cabs. So let's see it going. And this is also why these cherubs are often sent to do things and God is not there. So there's some level of sentience to these beings. And here's another cherub. Some people have seen these birds fly out of the sky. 
or um, excuse me, fly out of the ocean into the sky. Now, here's another image sourced from uh, an occult book. And this is, it says here how evil spirit appears, but again, the occult book obviously is not even written current enough for the individual writing and doesn't even know what they're looking at because this is actually Cassio, who's also known in many texts as Solomon himself and seen only through the Russian bas relief uh, that uh, Bank of America sponsored and, and showed the, the ancient relics of Russia where the real King Solomon is on the throne looking like this, a demon in the face or a reptile man, but still the old ancient serpent walking bipedal and still com uh, uh, commencing to command Jinn, as they say Solomon could do. He had the ring, which had the pentagram, which was the hex then, and then he would put the hex on the demons and then use them to do work. But wait a minute. A demon is non-physical, so how would he do work? And then you'll get to the rest of the works of Solomon, that then they would take the demon and put it into a willing servant, and then the demon would use his strength until it wore out the human's body. Okay? This is nothing to be playing with. But this world's been playing with it for two or three thousand years. Kids in God's toy box. Here we are again, Cassiel. It shows the more the revealing of the, the individual, or the individual entity who is the angel of Saturn, by the way. Cassiel connects very deeply with Ethiopia and very deeply with the Naga and very deeply with the king that was in Cush. And of course, anyone who is practicing in the system, meaning the individuals who know about all this, they know all of that. It's the only it's only the individuals who are like, oh, yeah, I'm this. Rastafari, those are the only, that's a laughing stock because these entities are real and they hold sway over large cultures. And it's the same story all over again, rebottled that we keep falling for. So be very clear and precise about what you're seeing today so that you can make sure that you're not caught up in any of this in any kind of way. And if you are, every day is a new day. You can choose now. Turn away. And I guarantee you, you'll be going in the right direction. Here we are, the god of Tyree. What is he riding on? A set beast. Behemoth, as they called it. Leviathan. So there was some kind of large organic animal that obeyed them. So just like you would have a dog today, they had these large animals that obeyed them, which very well may be a part of the 200 fallen angels. Not all of them appearing like men, but actually being animals themselves. And then if you look deeply into that, you'll find a secret to astrology and the zodiac and the animalistic uh, nature of the stars in the sky, which are the lesser stars in the vault of heaven, as it's called. Because those that write those scriptures know that there's an inner verse and no stars appear all burnt out like that. Now, this trident is also a key symbol of this cult. You'll see it everywhere. But before you see that trident, notice how his foot is standing on this creature, which is, again, a behemoth. It's what he's riding on, a sea monster. So even on a physical level, there was probably a time where something that appeared to be like a man came riding out of the sea on a large creature that made everyone scared. And it made them revere this, this man, or supposedly a man, even more because he had tamed it. But really, it's just one of the fallen angels. Yo, I'm going to ride in on you. <laughs> Think about it. Yo, I'm going to ride in on you. You're going to act very tame, of course. I'm going to act like I kill you right in front of them. And then they're going to start worshiping. And then we're going to start cleaning up things from there because you understand that man and woman are more valuable than oxen and cows because if you get a man or a woman, they'll bring you all their oxen and cows and their children and their ideas. That's, so they plot together about how they're going to cause spoil and waste. It's like every day up to malevolence. Okay. Now people have seen these kind of mischievous characters in this world, so don't act like this is too far off of anything that you've ever seen or heard before. Here we go some more. So remember the set beast here, right? Okay, now here's something interesting, totally unrelated picture. Or is it? And this is how you can see how the symbolism crosses over because of course, this is Lex Tenebris, which is the, the entire focal point of many of the ancient arts, especially masonry, through the planet Venus. 
And, but the main symbol, as you should see, is in the bottom right corner, once again, set beast is down there. So then you understand that the angel will appear as anything, a beautiful woman, you know, in full glory, looking like a warrior goddess. But on the book, you see it's a G. Of course, the G is six, Gan, which is the family. That's uh, the term for Gan, the family from the sky, but now on the ground, this, uh, they missed the mark, which is what the symbol of G is again, is the Ouroboros, but where the serpent does not ascend. Next picture here, you also see that now, <laughs> This is the progression, and that's why I was saying, like, we're being had, because we're working for them. And that's why I wanted to tell you earlier in this conversation that what the king is doing is feeding on the people. That's why they were calling them the shepherd kings. That the shepherd kings, and I did have that written down here. Let me see. Yeah. The shepherd kings. So, yeah, the shepherd kings are, they, they feed on the flock. Yeah, here it is. The domesticator was the word I was looking for. That's why it also start, you start seeing now a confusion where there's a wrestling of the animalistic nature because it's a domesticator. It wants to break the animal's will. And then once that happens, then it starts to feed on the flock. The flock starts, it starts shearing them, you know, taking their, their clothes and make, taking their fur and making clothes, <laughs> making clothes for them. Notice this, when they shear the sheep, and the sheep is cold. <laughs> you gotta grow the fur back and it shears them again. So who gets the uncomfort? The sheep. So you see how they are playing it. So now Dionysus, let me go back. Dionysus, who said, who's Azazel, who's, you know, this is like the who's who of the horn gods. Okay, and that's why there's a crown on his head now, but what is a crown a symbol of? Horns. So some people think, oh, that's the benevolent king riding. Okay, yeah, they got you too. What a shame. It's the king. Now he's chilling. So maybe back in the old days, he didn't, his ship could have been a physical ship. Some of them that said, oh, wait, now, because remember, you're probably dealing with the descendants now. Now the big ones are on the other realm, but the quote unquote child or descendant is now riding around in a real physical boat that he's built and with the wine and all the rest of what comes with it. So this is now I want people to see there becomes again another evolution as you go through time, which I'm taking you through, you see this slight tick every now and then of, oh, now we're in boats. <laughs> see, now they're in spaceships, by the way. So all that what you see moving around out there is the great going and coming, that's as they call it, meaning that they, they have the cherubim moving through Earth. So that way they watch Earth at all times. It goes and comes, as they say. See what we got up, coming up here next. All right, here's Moses. Now, Moses is a very unique story only because it's one of the most recent ones that we've just come off of. Now, it's obvious that Moses is feeling like he just has to have horns on his head today. But what is that really about? And it's because Moses took from Egypt. OK, now let me show you how the story plays out today. So everyone's clear on what happened in Egypt as these people were being expelled from Egypt because they were too numerous. Like basically Egypt got tired of all these people that were hanging around that were broke. Now this is Lower Egypt. This is the Elizabethan Empire, so they want to get rid of these people somewhat like the Israelis are telling the Ethiopians that they can't come into their country. So then one of them raises up and sees an opportunity that he can actually take not only the knowledge that the Egyptians believe in, but also these people who they want to get rid of anyway, and then go somewhere else and set up something new. They call him Moses. Some say he's tough Moses. There's many different uh, uh, explanations for who this individual is, but we should see him as one thing, a person who is possessed by none other than the horn god again. See, it's the same energies. Still, now they want to cook up another hyperdimensional story. It's like, okay, now we got to do something new. We got to do something new. Why don't you act like you're expelling them? And then they'll go with him. I'll follow them in the cherubim. And that's why they say it was an angel, a pillar of uh, uh, a cloud in front of them during the day and a pillar of fire behind them at the night. I'll follow them in the cherubim. We'll go ahead and migrate them across. Now, of course, there are going to be some people that die and kill. And then with th this level of belief that they're going to have, because remember, when you have a level of belief that is so high that you become a lunatic, which is the real uh, uh, why, reason why it's associated with Luna. 
when you have this idea that this God is with you, then a person can fight with an immense level of their own energy. As I said, humans have the ability where our ideas, our actual ideas are our energy. So what happens is, is that the guide and route and now he's got his own tribe. Go ahead and take your own thing. It's your lot, son. You're from Egypt. <laughs> you have to see that all these kings are doing is giving their sons. Remember, Moses was supposed to be a, a son of the Egyptians, but they said, no, he wasn't. He actually was, uh, he was just raised in the Egyptian house. They try to cover it up, but it's the same thing because Moses is really worshiping Ammon, who's really Jupiter, according to the Greek text, too. But Jupiter is a horn god, as you see in the image here. It's the same thing. So because what... Moses left Egypt with was the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was the agreement that they had between the, them and the horn god. And so thus the people that left, that's the, why the first thing that Aaron or Arian does is he, when Moses leaves, as the story goes, when Moses leaves, he tells Moses, uh, he tells the people, uh, the people start growing and complaining we want a god, and he makes them a golden calf. And he says, look, it's the god that led you out of Israel. Hmm. <laughs> does, does, is no one watching this is what I'm asking. So you see that there's obviously, again, a sharing. Obviously, Egypt inherited the, the, uh, the tradition of the Nephilim and the fallen angels and the Anunnaki from the Egyptians. And now, I mean, I'm excusing the Sumerians, uh, the Egyptians inherited from the Sumerians. And now they're in in Egypt with the same thing and even have now what I've completely discovered is uh, Upper Egypt, as it's called, participating in the same thing, Nubia, under King Menelik, which is the covenant between Shiva, who is she Sheba, who is Shiva, who of course is also Zazel, who's Baal, who's etc., the one with the hoof foot. Notice how they say the Queen of Sheba had a hoof foot. If you understand what they're talking about, they're saying it's the same hoof foot being, and now there's a covenant made, and that's why to this day, the people in Cush feel like they got screwed about by the covenant. Because the covenant was the first unseating of the traditions of uh, uh, Tammuz and Damuzi. Excuse me, uh, uh, Tammuz and in, uh, in Ishtar, or Damuzi in Ishtar. So let's keep going here. Zeus Amon. So also remember, now Zeus, he was a snake before, now he's got the horns on. Any way you like it, basically. They'll metamorphosize it. If you want something that looks very powerful and strong, They'll do that. If you want something that looks very futuristic, they'll do that. Meaning that you have to realize the key to these beings is it's outside. It's outside. It's me. No, it's inside. It's you. Understand. All you have to do is just make it a real Taurus, meaning bring the energy back within and let it cycle and then bring it back within and let it cycle. But, you know, that's that's the activation conversation. Here we go. Now, you know, this is the heresy. Of course, people always, you know, I think I lose members every time I actually say something about Jesus, by the way. So I try to say as least amount as possible because I think I've drilled it in so much and knocked it home so many damn times about people not wanting to try to find something to go and believe in, especially if its name is Lord. And of course, we're going to take a break here in about uh, five minutes. I'm going to get to the second half of the show, by the way. Uh, but I am going to need to refresh myself really briefly and turn on the air. But um, probably like sweating a little bit over here. I'll be glowing. <laughs> but anyway, what we have here is, you see the fish <laughs> on the left? I don't know if that's your left or my right, but you see the fish that's anointing Jesus. Now remember, Oannes baptized Jesus, and that was the secret. Now, Oannes baptizes Jesus. Jesus' name begins with a J because a J is a hook, okay? Now, when Oannes baptizes Jesus, Oannes is none other than Dagon. Oannes is none other than the same entity once again, but now in fish costume, which if, if I was going to fast forward to the first image, which I won't choose to do, you'll see one of those Anunnaki actually had the fish body. And then you understand which one is actually guiding the Jesuits and the Pope, because, of course, they wear the mitre or the fish hat. So now what you see here is that there is a simple knowledge amongst these Anunnaki. Like they're very, they're, they're very, uh, um, very intelligent craftily intelligent. They call them cunning because they know to catch a fish, you must use another fish. See, this is the, the, the dangerous part. See, if you notice how everything about this whole uh, catching a person's soul is synonymous with fishing because there is a heavy level of symbology within the idea of the ocean, which is really deep space or deep inner space. There's undiscovered things down there. 
how many fish and different beautiful creatures are there, just basically underneath sea level or in the netherworld, how Satan lives in the ocean, and pretty much anyone who knows anything about real levels of the occult know that. And that's why Moses, of course, parts the water, but we, we won't get into that right now again. So what you'll find is, is that the reason why this image is, 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 is depicted as such is because Oannes is now granting Jesus the ability to be a lord of the land. And in the knowledge that Jesus, who is a fish, is going to draw other fish to him. Because just like a fisherman, if they want to catch a big fish, they're going to need to use a slightly smaller fish to catch a fish with another fish and then draw that fish up from the depths. So what the depths is basically is the fully expanded uh, uh, consciousness. Drawing that, that, uh, that soul from out of that consciousness is basically to make them think about only here and right now. And so, and never think about the complete expansion of who they are, just very uh, moment, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Very um, <laughs> momentary, but just instinctual shallow people. So still realize that that's why they're using the symbol. So we're going to take a, a brief break and I definitely want to, because we have like a perfect recording here, I want to stop it and start another recording. That way I can make sure that we get this one. So let me uh, go ahead and adjust a few things here. If you could just uh, bear with me. All right. And like I said, within, you could see already, within about, mm, I would say about one more month, two more months, the Astro Quest platform will be completely tuned. We'll have all the transitions and things uh, for you and uh, that are necessary to get you more uh, information about this. Also, tools. That's one of the major things that I would really like to contribute, especially after these kind of conversations, because once we drive this home really once and people get that, look, you know, you don't have nothing coming out there if you're dealing with these kind of entities. You're going to have to do this on your own. Once we get that across and people start to activate the inner cell, now we want to start walking through what is going on with the body, how to correct those situations, etc. Now, that's what I want to tell people, you know. If you can, you know, if you if you can and you're and you're available for it, support. The more that we can expand into um, higher levels of this information, where it becomes a lot more clear for everyone, then that is the that that increases the speed on us getting to a full level of um, of understanding. So, again, I always have a trouble asking for assistance and things, but people need to understand like it's an extreme effort. Of course, I have a baby. I took no baby vacations, by the way. Some people take leave when they have a child. Um, but I feel it very necessary, especially since it's December, to, to still see that all of the people here on this planet, especially if they're not in a, 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 the proper state of consciousness and they still need help, they're like my children too. So surely I cannot forsake them for another, I just have to make myself available for both. So I want people to realize that again, it, it's an immense effort here just to keep this going and we, we don't ask, the platform is completely free. We have uh, people that do support, and it's good that we do have them because if we didn't, they wouldn't be here. So, or, or excuse, no, if they didn't, they wouldn't be here. Yeah, if they didn't, we wouldn't be here. Excuse me. So the reality is, is that we all have to really be contributing with each other to expand this information, and that also means getting these videos and getting this stuff to other individuals that are capable of um, of doing something with it. So let me go ahead and make this transition here, and we're going to take a brief break. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to get into the second half of the show. There we go. All right.
Okay, everyone, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to reset things one time. That way uh, we can have a new recording and that way I can stop the live stream recording for those that want to take a look at it and, and want to download it right away. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop it and then what you're going to see is you're going to see the recording stop and then you're going to see it come back on again. So just wait for it and it'll actually be there. So stop it now.